And it was an extraordinary uh, example of rumour mongering uh, and how rumours can start and just get way out of control, which is what happened. And these rumours built, started on Friday, built all over the weekend. And uh, by the end of the weekend, there was a German journalist in Beijing for Der Spiegel who was so frustrated with all the calls from his head office that he went around Beijing and took photographs, uh, the leadership compound and other sensitive sites, just to demonstrate that there was nothing going on. Um, the rumours started from exactly three uh, accounts, all operated by a Chinese journalist operating from abroad, two Twitter accounts and a YouTuber who took uh, just unrelated and meaningless uh, tidbits of information, put them together and disinformation and manufactured a rumour. So uh, there was the fact that there had been some modest number of airline cancellations, flight cancellations around China due to the rolling COVID restrictions that China imposes. There was the fact that Xi Jinping hadn't been seen in public for a few days, which was merely because he was in quarantine uh, after having travelled to the Shanghai Cooperation Forum, his first trip out of the country, by the way, in two and a half years. So he was simply in isolation. And uh, somebody put in, into the middle of this a, a, a stock image, a file, photograph of a Chinese military convoy, and out of that managed to <laughs> confect a coup at the highest levels of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, in fact, the absolute opposite was true. The party was in the process of consolidating Xi Jinping's iron grip on the leadership. Uh, there were six senior, former senior officials, top officials, who were arrested, purged or sentenced to death on the weekend. At the very time these mad rumours were suggesting she was losing control, he was in fact cementing control. Mm. Which is fascinating because if, of course, those rumours had been swirling about Putin, they might have got, gained a lot more credibility given, you know, the state of the war in Ukraine. But what does it speak to when it comes to autocracies and potentially, you know, sort of vague dissatisfaction with Xi Jinping? Well, it's in the nature of uh, opaque autocratic regimes like China's that rumours can start easily and be fuelled rapidly. Uh, because nobody trusts the official pronouncements and if there is a problem it's always covered up and never really dealt with. Uh, hence the origins of the COVID virus. You'll remember that initial, those initial weeks uh, where officials tried to cover up the fact that there was a, a pandemic rather than act on it. So the opaque nature of regimes like this lends itself to that. Plus the fact that it's coming into a very sensitive time uh, for China with in just a couple of weeks, Xi Jinping will be anointed for a third consecutive five-year term as the leader of China, and that will be the first time since uh, Mao in the 1970s. So it's a particularly sensitive and delicate moment. Yeah, and particularly for him because the lead-up to this has been so critical, to your point, uh, you know, potential threats, potential uh, challenges from around him are very swiftly dealt with. Um, but he can't necessarily walk away from dissatisfaction around those very heavy COVID lockdowns that continue while the rest of the world is sort of moving out of them and some of the economic challenges facing the country. Well, that's right. It's a difficult uh, combination for Xi Jinping to manage because on the one hand, uh, these extraordinary and apparently endless lockdowns under the so-called uh, dynamic zero COVID policy of Xi Jinping uh, where it just it stamps on any COVID outbreak with a, a, a thoroughgoing lockdown, which it must be severely testing the patience of the Chinese public. And at the same time, as you say, Bev, the economic slowdown, which has partly been a result of the, the very COVID shutdowns themselves, but also a result of uh, Xi Jinping's extraordinary uh, control freak crackdown on the private sector and private entrepreneurs and the tech sector, uh, as a, an alternative source of power. This has become a source of great suspicion and unrest for uh, the, the great autocrat as he prepares to cement his third five-year term and the overdoing of the crackdown on the property sector, which had got out of control. And they're now, they've now erred on the side of overcorrecting. So in the last few days, for example, there were 18 large parcels of land that the government put out for sale in Beijing. 17 of those 18 were bought, the only buyer in the market, were state-owned enterprises. There are no private buyers because there's no demand because the sector's in collapse. And the 18th was bought by a private sector developer in league with a state-owned enterprise. So 
The real estate market is a disaster. The economy is uh, forecast by the World Bank, which uh, forecast just came out yesterday, I think. Growth forecast at under 3%. China, long the leader of the Asian growth race, is now the laggard, the slowest major economy in Asia. And um, all of this it poses a real challenge to Xi Jinping's ability to manage and suppress uh, a what, what must be a very um, unhappy citizenry at a time of some economic uh, suffering. And how he manages that once these next couple of weeks are finished and he is able to cement his leadership uh, will be a big question. And uh, his degree of openness, his ability to manage uh, the reopening of China will test what the underlying pressures really look like. Mm. What we hope are not just rumours, Peter, is a slight thawing in the relationship between China and Australia. We've seen Penny Wong meeting twice with Wang Yi, who appears very warm and cordial towards her, and suggestions that, in fact, China is getting ready to reset this relationship. Well, it suits both countries at the moment uh, to have what the Australian government likes to call a stabilisation in the relationship. Uh, from the Australian viewpoint, um, that has uh, so far meant only that political contact has resumed and, as you say, ministers are allowed to meet again. The Australian government is demanding that any further progress is premised on China withdrawing its trade sanctions, its political trade sanctions on Australia. There are no signs yet that China is about to withdraw those. And China at the moment is seeking a concession from Australia um, in the form of permission to join a trade group, the so-called CPTPP. Um, which you can't say three times in a hurry after a glass of wine, which is a, a, a new 11-country trade group from which China is currently excluded, but China wants to join. Australia is a member, and all members, existing members, have to approve any new, the accession of any new members, and China is uh, currently a supplicant wanting to join. So it's seeking a favour, um, and it suits China uh, to allow relations to appear a little friendlier. But in fact, you can't stabilise for any uh, length of time a relationship where one partner is inherent, inherently trying to destabilise uh, the regional and global uh, system and the rules-based order. So this can only be a temporary uh, state of affairs. Good to see you as always. Thanks, Peter. Pleasure, Bev.